Hello everyone, let's evaluate this integral i. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of x over 1 minus x with respect to x. Now the way we're going to do this is via a substitution, and it's not really an obvious substitution, but there's a bit of a hint as to what might be helpful in the fact that the denominator of our fraction here is 1 minus x. Now there are various trig identities involving 1 minus a squared trig function. For instance, we have 1 minus sine squared theta is cos squared theta. And so if we were to substitute x as sine squared theta, then we'd be able to make use of this trig identity, and that might help us to simplify our integrand a bit. Um, I haven't tried doing this with x equals cos squared theta instead. Um, I assume it will work out um, the same, but if anyone's interested, that might be worth uh, trying. So if we substitute x as sine squared theta, we also have to know what this dx is in terms of d theta, um, and so if we just take the differential of both sides of this um, relation between x and theta, we get dx, and then we have to use the chain rule on the right-hand side, so we get 2 sine theta, and then we have to multiply by the derivative of sine theta, which is cos theta, and then we have our, our d theta at the end. Okay, so this has transformed our integral i, I'm going to leave the limits blank for now, let's come back to those in a second. So x, remember, was sine squared of theta. Then on the no denominator we have 1 minus sine squared theta, which we said was cos squared theta, so let's put that there. And then our dx um, is 2 sine theta cos theta d theta. Now, we also have to transform our limits. Okay, so we're integrating from the point where x is 0, to the point where x is 1. Okay, and so where x is 0, uh, what is the value of theta? Well, we know that sine squared of theta has to be 0 because x is sine squared theta. And of course, there are infinitely many solutions to this, um, but it would be sensible uh, to choose the one at theta equals 0. Again, I haven't tried choosing a different value of theta. Um, again, I assume it would it would turn out to be the same because sine squared theta is a periodic function, so it shouldn't really matter which point you start at. Um, and then our upper limit was x equals 1, right? And so we have to solve the equation sine squared theta equals 1. Again, there are infinitely many solutions, but we should choose the first solution um, after this um, you know, theta equals 0 that we, that we chose for the x equals 0 case. And so the first time where sine squared theta is is 1 is when theta is pi over 2, right? So theta is pi over 2, and so our limits in the transformed integral are going to be 0 and pi over 2. So now we can just simplify this a bit, and so, um, well, we've got the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, let's take the square root, it's just sine theta over cos theta uh, times 2 sine theta cos theta d theta. Now the cos theta on the bottom conveniently cancels with the cos theta on the top, and so we are left with the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of just 2 sine squared theta with respect to theta. So the usual way to integrate a squared trig function is to use a double angle identity. All right, so note that cos of 2 theta, this is one of our standard double angle identities, um, this is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, but we can write um, cos squared theta as 1 minus sine squared theta, right, from this identity up at the top. And so this is actually the same as 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, and therefore 2 sine squared theta, which is our integrand, is the same as 1 minus cos 2 theta, right? And so what we're doing is integrating from 0 to pi over 2, just 1 minus cos of 2 theta with respect to theta. All right, so let's do the actual integration now. Well, 1 just integrates to theta. Uh, cos 2 theta integrates to um, half sine 2 theta. We've got this factor of a half uh, from the chain rule. And then we have limits of 0 and pi over 2. So let's plug the limits in uh, and see what we get. So uh, we first have a pi over 2, then we subtract off half sine of pi, sine of pi is 0, okay, and then, well, when theta is 0, um, well, theta is 0 and sine 2 theta is also 0, 
And so um, we end up basically just subtracting a whole bunch of zeros like that. And uh, our answer is just pi over two. So there we go, we've evaluated our integral i. Um, this may be a bit surprising if you think about um, how this graph actually looks. If you were to sketch y as a function of x where y equals um, square root of x over one minus x, it turns out, um, well, you can see pretty clearly that it has uh, an asymptote, a vertical asymptote at x equals one, right? And so the graph actually ends up looking something like, like that. Um, and so, you know, it goes off to infinity, but the area under it is still finite. So that's kind of interesting. Um, anyway, there you go, quite a, quite a cool substitution that we used to evaluate this, this integral.